Professor Gabriel Kraft, 11th of March, 1944. When creating a record of my involvement with the SS unit, the war has This may one day be called into question. That probably won't be around to explain myself. In early September 1939, I was in my office at the University of Leipzig. As my assistant, Franz. We were translating an ancient Sumerian scroll. In a man spoke to Allah announced. He said, I must immediately tender my resignation. Pack a suitcase and depart for an overseas trip as an advisor to the SS Battalion, the bar. That was the first time I met Oberfuhr Wolfram von Litz. All I saw was a uniform and a perfect haircut. I had no idea what lay behind those icy blue eyes. I actually laughed. I had heard of his battalion, whose name perversely means the truce. They raided antiquities around the world, looking for evidence to support their belief in an Aryan master race. I waved him away, saying I had no desire to help Reichsfuhrer Himmler twist history to fit the Nazi narrative. Von Liszt calmly shot both arms in the head. His voice was perfectly calm. Do I have your attention now, Herr Professor? Gabriel Kraft. Audio Memoir Part 2. After shooting my assistant, Von Liszt had me dragged out of Leipzig University and thrown in an SS prison. There were a dozen other experts already there, recruited from museums and universities across the Reich to assist the SS unit, the Wahrheit. They were explorers, historians, archaeologists, and so on. Many looked beaten. All Frightened. Hung on the wall was a map of the world with notes and drawings next to different locations, things like the Grail, Thor's Hammer, Atlantis, Shangri La. We wondered if this was a joke. But when one list arrived, he was dead serious. The Oberfuhrer ordered us to help his troops find the places on that map and retrieve those relics. It made no difference that they did not exist. We would deliver them, or else. The others agreed, filed out to do his bidding. They were not stupid men. I alone defied von Liszt. I said, I know what your Nazis are doing. I've seen friends and neighbors taken away. I've heard what happens at your camps, and I would rather die than help you. Von Liszt showed a flash of anger. And then he smiled. He was amused, I actually thought. I had a say in my own fate. Craft entry number three. I was surprised Von Liszt did not shoot me. I had refused to serve him twice. Instead, he sent his men to my home. They broke down the door and took my spouse to an SS interrogation chamber. I had put my values and dignity ahead of my own life. So von Liszt made someone else pay for my stubbornness. Should I refuse to help the Wahrheit or drag my feet in any way, the love of my life would be slowly tortured to death. Of course I complied. How could I do otherwise? But I also made a silent promise to myself. I would learn of the Wahrheit's secrets. If we found anything of real value, I would turn it against them. Somehow, I would destroy von Liszt and his Nazi thugs from within. Gabriel Kraft, or the old memoir, Once von Liszt forced my cooperation, I 
first assignment for the Baha'i was to decipher a document seized at the infamous Hotel Roy in Paris. Well, infamous to someone like me, who spent a career studying the groups the devil did, for want of a better term, the accountant. I dislike that word. Practitioners of what some condemn as witchcraft are usually ordinary folk. They just approach the divine in a different way than their neighbors and they can help them. The society of cult, on the other hand, had no such problem. Their wealth and power protected them from your average witchful power. And they sought to use dark magic as a means of extending their influence. I know it was the documents for pages from the society's fabled tome of rituals. It was a so-called spell book compiled over centuries. Only that in a circle could ever see it. But something terrible happened back in the twenties. Some crisis that compelled the society to take the book apart and hide the pages in sacred places around the world. Because I recognized the pages, I was rewarded with the task of tracking more down and reconstituting them. Ah, as he often reminded me, Von Liszt had my beloved Sasha under arrest, succeeding in my task. It was my only chance to keep us both alive. Gabriel Kraft, Audio Memoir, Part 5. My servitude to the Wahrheit was almost over before it truly began. I was tasked with gathering the lost pages of the Tome of Rituals. But I had no idea where to start. All I had was a few pages already in Von Liszt's possession. Von had notes scribbled in the margin. And just as Von Liszt began threatening to execute my poor Sasha, I recognized that handwriting. One of the patrons of my university was an amateur demonologist. <laughs> the hobbies of the idle rich. Anyhow, he must have once possessed the pages to have jotted down those notes. Von Liszt had him arrested and tortured. He revealed. He had been a member of the society, one entrusted with hiding tome pages. He listed others who also possessed a few. With enough pages, I deduced the locations of various artifacts listed within them. For a time, I was von Liszt's most valuable helper. He rewarded me with a letter from Sasha. Proof of life, he called it. I tried not to weep as I read it. Von Liszt hated that. But things turned for the worse when none of the artifacts seemed to have any power. I had made a devil's bargain to keep my beloved alive. But my luck was running out. Craft, entry number six. I had found Von Liszt the artifacts in the Tome of Rituals. They proved as useless as the rest of the relics the Varheit plundered. He looked at me with more disgust than usual. Losing faith in me, the moment I was no longer useful, would be the end of me and my Sasha. So we were never officially married, and we kept our union from prying eyes. Sasha was my spouse. I could not give up until we were reunited. But the search for a mystical Wunderwaffe to save the Reich was based on the delusions of a Nazi death cult. I was beginning to despair. And then the incident at Project End Station punched a hole into the dark ether, awakening the artifacts in the blink of an eye. My fear I was not producing results became abject terror that I had handed Wolfram von Liszt the ultimate weapon. This is Professor Kraft. Open all barriers so we can stop Oberfuhrer von Liszt. He has bonded with Cortifex, the enemy of the demons you bonded with. Enter the portals and win Black Hearts, the coin of this dark realm. Uh, greetings. 
I am Professor Gabriel Kraft. I presume you came in response to my message. The one I radioed just before the containment spell went up. I had hoped for a larger fighting force, but I already see you are no ordinary soldiers. Perhaps you will be enough. But we have quite a challenge ahead. You see, our mission is to stop the man responsible for the nightmare unfolding all around you. The commanding officer of the SS Battalion Devahide. The murderer who has now bonded with an ancient evil. Overführer Wolfram von List. Left unchecked, he will single-handedly win the war for the Nazis. That may sound preposterous, but I assure you, it is true. In any case, thanks to the containment spell, we are cut off from the outside world. Unable to summon reinforcements, or further warn your superiors. Success or failure is solely up to us. Gabriel Croft to Special Forces. By now you know the dark ether entities dwelling within you have visited our world before. Those who could perceive them have mistaken them for ghosts, deities, even angels. My own description of them as demons owes more to my academic background than to any belief they are infernal in origin. But we all see the world through our own lens. One can hardly blame a Viking for seeing Nauticus as a frost giant or the ancient Greeks for thinking in Victor was the war god Ares. My point is that our own biases color how we see them. You hear demon and you think evil. <laughs> the truth is much more nuanced. These are immortal beings from another universe, as capable of benevolence as they are of doing harm. In short, they do not share our sense of right and wrong. So I'll never forget, these are not demons in some biblical sense of the word. They are your partners. Their hatred of court effects assures that our goals are aligned. Craft here. As you well know, this area is swarming with revenants. We just want to reassure you. I myself am quite safe for the moment. Since the day the artifacts awoke, Von List kept me by his side. After all, I'm as close as there is to an expert on the entity dwelling within him. When we arrived here in Stalingrad, he took the locals by surprise. The last thing they expected was the Nazis to return. But Von List had been here when the Germans surrendered. He wants to turn the site of their greatest loss into the source of Nazi victory. To do this, he will raise an army of revenants from the millions who perished on the Eastern Front. But to accomplish such a feat, court effects must first build up his strength. Von List locked me in this room with my books and the radio. I watched from my window as he called upon court effects to seal off this part of the city. And I knew I had to act. Once I radioed for help, I used what I learned from the Tome of Rituals. The rune magic in its pages sealed this room. Of course, I have no idea how to undo the spell, but for now, neither Von List nor his revenants can touch me here. And now that you have responded to my cry for help, we must work together. They must stall their progress and gather information on Devor Heights activities. I will continue to advise you while I formulate a plan to stop them once and for all. Till then, keep fighting, my champions. We must strengthen your demons if we have any hope of winning. Craft here. I have been thinking about something that happened when the artifacts of Aiken. Von List bonded with Cortifex. One of the first things he did was to gather all the pages from the Tome of Rituals that led us to the Scepter of Cortifex. And 
locks him away in his office. I stayed out of his way. Frankly, I was terrified. The man was already dangerous. But now, there was a light in those pale blue eyes that... Well, you get the idea. But in hiding the origins of the scepter, Von List raised some troubling questions. Was there some vulnerability mentioned in those pages? Some threat to his plan? <laughs> I was not on the expedition that recovered the scepter. All I know is it was found in Egypt's eastern desert, far from the great cities of antiquity. I heard there was a temple to Osiris there, long forgotten and not mentioned in ancient records. I suspect those pages may provide a breakthrough for our little resistance movement. There must be some reason for list in them. Just something to keep in mind as we search for a way to stop the Vahai before the worst can come to pass. This is Kraft, with some background on the artifacts you carry. They were used by ancient priests and sorcerers in places as far flung as the Yucatan and the islands of Japan. They were said to commune with angels and summon demons. But when we unearthed these artifacts, we were faced with a mystery. There were strange design details, markings, and materials that simply did not fit the cultures that claimed them. These objects were anomalies, anachronisms. They did not belong in those settings. They were alien. I have since confirmed the artifacts were created in the dark ether dimension. They were cast by inhuman hands in forms meant to appeal to human aesthetics. Small wonder they got the details wrong. They allowed beings who could not come here physically to visit as spirits and bond with mortal flesh. Some, like court were cruel, controlling. Others, like Bellica, were kind, benevolent. Alas, these relics became their prisons. Each demon is now trapped like the proverbial genie in a land. Safeguard your artifacts. Study them. Learn to unlock their powers. Just uh, don't try to send them. Any appraiser versus salt would dismiss them as forgeries. <laughs> In a sense, they look right. Craft to Special Forces team. We should talk about the entities you bonded with. You must have so many questions. Fortunately, I taught demonology at the University of Leipzig. Ha. I have more than a passing familiarity with your otherworldly partners. Since 1939, I was forced to work for von List on his Divarhide thugs. I helped them recover five ancient artifacts. As it turned out, these were conduits to supernatural beings from a place called the Dark Ether. The most powerful among them, Cortifex the Deathless, is in league with Overfuhrer von List. The demons inhabiting you are his sworn enemies. I shall do all I can to help you take advantage of their gifts without being corrupted by their influence. Then again, this is a time for uneasy alliances. Who would ever have imagined Churchill and Stalin joining forces? Better the devil you know, as they say. So, for now, we work towards a common purpose with your demons. They need to stop courting. We need to stop one list. Win or lose. We must do this together. This is Kraft. I want to talk about dark ether rules. Those little symbols you see all around. I first saw them on loose pages from the Tome of Rituals that I tracked down for the Varheit. Then we found them inscribed at all the sites where we found the Dark Ether artifacts. I could see the fitness 
no known human ever met. But some of my colleagues attributed them to the ancient Aryans. Their reasons were obvious. Von List answers to Reichsführer SS Heinrich Himmler, whose belief in German superiority is the core of the Nazis' poisonous ideology. Himmler wanted the Wahrheit to fight evidence the Aryan race invented the hallmarks of civilization, including written language. But kissing Himmler's backside would not change the facts. These rules were not Aryan. They were, however, used in mystical rites, as far back as Egypt's fourth dynasty, and as recently as the 1920s. Belakar has since explained to me that they are the basis for dark ether road magic. She is endeavoring to teach me their use, but I fear I have been a poor pupil. Some runes are associated with specific demons, like Cortifex or Saraxis. Others, well, I suppose that remains to be seen. This is Oberfuhrer Wolfram von List, calling from the Varite Mobile Headquarters. Supporting the army Transcribe and forward the following to the office of Heinrich Himmler. Berlin, I'm Reichsfuhrer. We have experienced dramatic development here in Lenin. I will go into detail with the next minute. Suffice to say, I am a changed man. I must now take immediate action on behalf of the Reich. Be advised we are deploying immediately to Stalingrad. I will wait for permission. The situation is precarious and there is not a moment to lose. You know my devotion to the Reich is complete and unshakable. I do not take this action lightly. I am now in position of the Reich's sole threat to the future. It will turn the tide of the entire world. It can scum the tide of right. Tell the Fuhrer this is no cause for alarm. Not where there was celebration. Endure. Oberfuhrer von List, to all the Wahrheit personnel operating in Merville, France, in Paris, and in the swamp known to locals as Chino Numa. First, your service is exemplary. The dimensional weak spot at the windmill site is already receiving vital support from the Dark Ether. The archaeological dig at Chino Numa is yielding important insights about the entities aiding the enemy. And preparations atop the Hotel Royale will ensure that all of Paris will soon experience a very different sort of nightlife. Be advised that another area of operations is underway. You may hear radio traffic from our unit in the eastern desert of Egypt. Theirs is a mission vital to protecting our most valuable ally. Here, court effects. Requests from this task force get top priority. So far, Kraft's little band of guerrillas have not targeted that operation. And I intend to keep it that way. Continue with your duties, my loyal soldiers. Soon the whole world will be at our feet. Oberfuhrer von List to all the Wahrheit personnel across all theaters of special operations. As of now, I am altering our timetable, reducing the time allotted by half. Yes, I know this is drastic, but I have always asked much of you, and you have always delivered. We set out together to scour the globe. We sought objects of power no one believed existed. To turn the tide of a war no one believed could be won. And yet, here we are. Harnessing forces beyond mortal ken. Perched on the precipice of the greatest advancement in the history of human warfare. Our enemy now is not that ragged band of soldiers delivering mere paper cuts on the orders of the traitor, Kraft. 
No. Our enemy is time itself. Even now, the so-called allies are gathering an invasion force to retake Europe. This we cannot allow. The army of the Thousand-Year Reich must rise completely to secure what is rightly ours. Until then, redouble your efforts. And be careful. Kraft's commandos strike everywhere we work. Take appropriate precautions and stay on task. The future of the Reich depends on you. This is Oberfuhrer Wolfram von List. To all troops of Kampfgruppe die Wahrheit, you have my congratulations and sincere appreciation for what you have accomplished so far in Stalingrad. Exhumation of corpses continues on schedule. Our undead army will soon rise in earnest on that glorious day. A march across Europe begins. We are transforming the site of our greatest military humiliation into the source of our ultimate victory. For the Third Reich, Stalingrad was not das Ende, not the end. It is der Anfang, the beginning. From here, our army der Toten will awaken. Marching from mass grave to mass grave, increasing their ranks. The Fatherland's honored dead will once again fight for our shared destiny. And if you see old friends and comrades among them, remember, they will not be the men they once were. But their service continues. Their previous sacrifice no longer in vain. Just salute them and get out of their way. Our fallen will combine with their own to drive all our enemies into the sea. This is Oberfuhrer Wolfram von List, commanding officer of SS Battalion Die Wahrheit. I am broadcasting on an open channel to the soldiers assisting Professor Gabriel Kraft. I am not sure why you answered his cry for help. Surely. No, by now, if you continue to oppose me, I will eventually kill you all. But it does not have to end that way. I am asking you to reconsider your mission. It simply makes no sense. The man you are helping is... hardly a man at all. He is a traitor who cannot be trusted. He once served Divarite. Do you know this? It was he who made possible my union with court effects the deathless. There would be nothing for you to battle here. Had that little demonologist not lent me his expertise. This is really all his fault, if you must point the finger. And now he expects you to risk your lives just to undo his mistakes? This is the very definition of a fool's errand. But you can still withdraw. Stop helping Kraft, and I will allow your retreat. Continue hating him, but you will all die horribly. And after that, you will take your place in my army of the dead. Can you hear me, Professor? Yes. What else is there for you to do? I should have sent you to the castle if I could have to crawl to the breathe in the air you do.
Society or court, but the wealthiest, most powerful people in Europe. Puppet masters of the Western world. They also dabbled in dark magic. Their seances and rituals at the Hotel Royale were the stuff of legend. They were children playing with fire, and if I answered their call, it was only out of boredom. After all, I was trapped in my scepter. If some red blood fool contacted me with their crystal ball, at least it gave me a glimpse of how far humans had come. And for all the progress they thought they made, for all their riches and influence, the society occult were tampering with forces beyond their understanding. The one thing that impressed me was their spell book, the Tome of Rituals, dark ether rune magic written by humans, but they could not have written it without help. True. Over the centuries, we summoned others of your kind, and one of them, most likely Belika, gave those children all the matches they needed to burn their world to cinders. Wolfram, you remind me of someone I knew long ago. He was a pharaoh in the land of the Nile. He saw himself as a god, and everyone around him as vermin. In fact, he was delightfully cruel. But you, Oberfuhrer Wolfram von List, are of rare and special find. You have the blackest heart I have ever encountered in a human. You might have been royalty where I come from, had you not been born on this pathetic ball of dust. I tell you this not to flatter you, but 
Because I expect the world from you, and you will deliver it unto me. This power I grant you is not something I would share with just anyone. But I am willing to see your dreams fulfilled and your enemies crushed. For you are a worthy vessel. You are the instrument of my revenge. We are new to you, human. But your kind is not new to us. Nothing has been new in eons. Since time began, we of the Dark Aether have been at war. And none know the ways of warfare better than I. For this reason, the mightiest lord of the Dark Aether, court events the Deathless, placed me in command of his armies. We launched the Nether Wars upon his rivals, and for a time, it seemed we would crush them. But Cortifex is a cruel master. Loyalty is something he neither feels nor inspires. As I watched his enemies unify into a joint resistance, I knew he could never truly succeed. When I joined them and we toppled his throne, Cortifex swore vengeance. He sees the human Von List as the means to that end. There are those in the Dark Aether who would still support his return, but most would do anything to help us stop him here. Xeraxis likes to claim she discovered your world. Challenge accepted, Magatrain. Yes. She saw you. I have never fully fathomed, but I assume he saw new lands to plunder. He ordered Nauticus to stand conquest. Nauticus ordered me to learn your ways of war. Curiosity is her lifeblood. We each have our favorite word. The Greeks, the Cortifex, the Egyptians. We were seen as patron spirits. You just made your last mistake. God. So that's a state of no idea to make art of us. I could bond us to mortals, but if the better comes come, to actually make it work. I'm coming. We tried to make them fit the cultures we wanted to visit. None of us got it quite right. My sword the closest to my sword, but swords I understand. Court effects. Things like that. <laughs> 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 I can't 
controlling you affecting your mind. So guess what more than a few humans used to call me? Some even offer themselves for my kitsune tsuki. I salute the Japanese for their fearlessness. Because that's what you have to be to bond with me. Fierce! Soldiers, servants, holy men, lords and ladies. Ah, I hooked up with anyone who was willing to take me for a ride. And what the time we pass. The party lasted from the Heian period well into the Edo period. But it all came to an unpleasant.
from rising in earnest. 